Hey, good afternoon. Welcome to Sports Beat Live, where we discuss the Chiefs with you and uh, the folks who cover the team for the star. We've got Sam Mellinger and Herbie Teope here. I'm hoping soon to be joined uh, at Hope and, uh, and, and, and it Hope is delivered with, uh, with Sam McDowell. And maybe, just maybe, if we cross our fingers, Vahe Gregorian will join us at some point as well. So uh, we already got a lot of questions that we got to get to. Let's, um, uh, let, let's quickly review what happened, maybe give you a little news update as well. So Chiefs lose here today at Arrowhead Stadium to the LA Chargers, 30 to 24. The story of the game is clearly the, 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 the giveaways by the Chiefs. There were four, count them four, including the first three possessions, which ended in turnovers for the Chiefs. I, we were all dumbfounded. The, all of these happened after the, the Chiefs had driven into Chargers territory. So we'll get into that in a big way. But uh, first, just an update on, on Andy Reid. He did not come to the post-game press conference. And there was a little bit of a delay, right, guys? You guys were downstairs. I stayed in the press box. It seemed like there was a bit of a delay that um, uh, before, you know, longer than usual for a press conference to start. And um, and then it was it was uh, special teams coach Dave Tog who came out and took some questions. And we learned and were told then that Andy Reid was feeling ill, had addressed the team after the game, but was feeling ill and did not come out to the post game press conference. Then. Um, uh, I don't know, a few minutes later, uh, James Palmer of the NFL Network tweeted that Andy Reid had been taken uh, by ambulance to a local hospital as a precautionary measure, and uh, the, the Chiefs did not confirm this, but um, that's kind of what the, the latest is now. I, I think that if uh, you know, we, we can speculate a little bit, it was a, it was a really warm day here at Arrowhead. It was 81 degrees at kickoff, and by the end of the game, the temperatures were in the low 90s. So that, that may have played a factor in, uh, in, in what happened to Andy Reid. And I expect we'll get an update uh, pretty soon on Andy. If it happens during the show, we'll certainly bring it to you. Okay, Herbie, let's, uh, let's start with you. I, I mentioned the turnovers. There's a lot more to discuss about this, but you turn the ball over four times and you don't create a, a takeaway. That pretty much uh, seals your fate, does it not? Oh, absolutely. And you know what? Dave Tobe mentioned it. After the game, uh, you, you know, he says statistics show that if you're losing the tournament, back, you're just not going to win in the National Football League. And he's absolutely correct. Patrick Mahomes echoed him during his post-game press uh, conference and said the same thing. You know, you can't have four turnovers and expect to win. Oddly enough, you know, they still score two points and are still in the game. But you know, that's, that's just asking way too much when you're giving up, when you're turning the ball over that way, and then you're not stopping the other team from scoring that that's where that big disparity happens and you know they, they shot themselves in the foot with self-inflicted wounds and second straight week they caught up with them that's six turnovers now in the last what six quarters of play uh, that, that's not good yeah well if you count the the way the baltimore game ended that was four in a row four straight possessions and five out of six uh going back to last week and in in baltimore sam mcdowell great to see you again it's been a while and uh really good to have you back so what um what else can can be said about this why why in the world have the chiefs all of a sudden become a sloppy football team yeah you know i think that um sloppy is the right word i think careless is another word uh it's it's to me been a, a little bit of a long time coming i mean the, the chiefs last year won a lot of games like this and I, I think, you know, Patrick Mahomes talked about it with us in the offseason that they sort of learned that they can win despite making mistakes. In these last two weeks, they're, they're learning how much mistakes can cost them football games. Um, you know, it, it, obviously a lot of the emphasis will be on how this game ended, um, but it's the first half that is going to be really the culprit for why they lost this game with, with turning the ball over on, on not just three consecutive drives, but three drives when they were moving the ball at will. Uh, I mean, they did not even face a third down on those first two drives. Uh, the turnover was, was the only way the Chargers were going to get stops on either one of those drives. Um, so, like I said, I think that you, you would hope, obviously, that, that the way they lost last week um, would be enough of a lesson. But I think that this should, should really um, be cemented, the fact that 
you can't turn the ball over early in games. You can't make the mistakes like the, that they've been making over these past couple of weeks, even early in games, because as much as it worked out for them so often at the end of last year, um, that's not always going to be the case. Yeah, I'll t- tell you, Melly, it was almost a minor miracle that even with three three turnovers to start the game, to, uh, to begin the game for the Chiefs, that they had the lead in the second half a couple of times, right? 17 to 14 and, uh, and 24 to 21, and had the game tied and had possession with, uh, with two and a half minutes remaining. I, I couldn't sort of. First of all, I couldn't believe the turnovers. We haven't seen anything kind of quite like that in the Mahomes era, four in all. And, um, uh, and, and uh, you know, the, the, a lot of other things that you just, you know, shake your head at. But to me, I, I think I come away maybe most surprised that in a situation where the, Chief, the game is tied, the Chiefs have the ball um, and need to go, I don't know, for, for Butker's range, I don't know, 40 yards or something, and have two and a half minutes in all their timeouts, they go two-yard run by Edwards Alaire, a kind of a bad throw by Mahomes that Kelsey couldn't handle, and then the interception, the fourth turnover of the game for for the Chiefs, for them to not find something there and, to, and be able to create something there, uh, that's that, that, that'll be one of my lasting memories of this game. It's pretty wild. They Not just the four turnovers, but they didn't get any turnovers. Right, like the Chargers <laughs> turn the ball over zero times, and to have a chance to win at the end of the game is is pretty ridiculous. Um, when when those are the facts of the game, I just <clears throat> to me, and I don't know if this is just projecting or if I'm seeing things that aren't there, or whatever. But Chiefs sometimes they look, and Sam just mentioned the the pattern last season. They look like a team that's just expecting the talent to take over, and that the talent will win the day. And they're allowing some sloppiness to go on because they get away with it, and they have. And I'm just really curious on that specific point. Dave Tobe, um, who <laughs> is is more honest um, in press conferences, he'll, he'll say some stuff sometimes um, that, that maybe the head coach wouldn't. And and he called it a crossroads, like this moment. And this is this is an early season crisis. Um, and and I'm you know for one just really interested to see how they deal with it because they've been saying, like, if you think like. Last year, worst in the red zone, right? <clears throat> the defense. And then they spent the whole offseason talking about fixing the red zone. Now they're even worse. Um, Mahomes, that 20 0 thing, we've talked about this a million times. That was not to go 20 0. That was for daily focus and to clean up some sloppiness. We've seen them be sloppy. So they've had this sort of, there's some stuff here going on where they say one thing and they're, and they're not backing it up. And I just, I wonder if there's going to be, you know, some hard conversations uh, behind closed doors this week. God, that red zone defense. We'll talk about that as well. But let's welcome in Vahe. Hey, Vahe. Hey, Blair. Hi, guys. Yeah. I see, Blair, you've got that red background behind you to reiterate the red zone issues. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it is. Um, it's a good place to need to start a conversation. Let's let's just pick it up there. Uh, I think the streak got up to 12, uh, 12 in a row uh, of, of uh, opponents scoring touchdowns in the red zone, 12 for 12 this year. Into today, into today, and finally it stopped with a field goal, and and and, and maybe the defense's best moment, right? Uh, the, the Chargers get down to the one yard line uh, in in the final minutes of regulation or final minutes. It didn't go over time, but um, they get they get a, a illegal formation penalty, I believe, pushed them back to the six, and they could not get it in. Had to settle for the field goal, and I, I thought at that point that that was a victory. It was a big victory for the Chiefs. Uh, 24-24, two and a half minutes to go. They'll get a field goal, win this thing, just like we thought last week, right? Just, uh, just take care of the ball, and they'd already moved into well into Butker's range. Just get the field goal, beat Baltimore, and I think that says something about this team that, you know, they, they had incredibly poorly timed turnovers last week that cost them at Baltimore, and today, to 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 be you know minus four in turnover ratio, you're not going to beat anybody, much less a, a team that's that has uh, you know good talent like like uh, Justin Herbert and, and the Chargers. So what did you end up uh, writing about, Vahe? I'm writing a little bit about Patrick, but to, to your point, Blair, I mean, it's like, it, you know, they, they're, they're learning that they can't get away with cramming for the final exam anymore, right? I mean, that you got you to gotta win the game in, in the first 58 minutes. Uh, or it's helpful to, to establish yourself in the first 58 minutes. I think 
despite last week, we all thought they were going to probably score uh, with what they did at the end. Uh, and again, there's a there's a turnover. So it's funny for all that talk about the extra urgency, uh, being ready, play every snap. The, the basis for the 20 and 0, as Sam pointed out, um, it's really not been there. What is weird is they are they are. I mean, other than the consistency of the red zone uh, uh, whiffs. They're kind of losing these games in little different ways, right? I mean, and each has required self-inflicted issues. If they don't make a bunch of mistakes last week that that we think they don't normally make, and they don't make those four turnovers today, you know, they're kind of getting away with it, seems to me. Finding a way to lose is what you're saying. Yeah, it's it's the reverse of uh of of what we've seen, right? The uh and I think. I don't know who it would have been. One of the one of the guys on this call probably wrote a finding a way to win thing. Oh, it was me. Uh, I think after the after the Cleveland game, maybe and and um, uh, that, that's really not happening anymore. <laughs> no, it isn't. Um, so let's let's look at those turnovers. I, I rarely do we criticize Patrick Mahomes for a poor play. Um, Hervey, the last time we talked with you, you were, we we're getting a little your interference. Let's see if that's cleared up. But on, on the first turnover, the Chiefs drive to the about the 33. Patrick Mahomes looks uh, downfield. He has he has Marcus Kemp of all the wide receivers open about 10 yards in front of him. The ball sails off Kemp's shoulder. It deflected and intercepted, ending the Chiefs' drive. Um, who's to blame there? Hey, guys, hands on it. I'm going to say that that's on the receiver. It was a no-look pass. You know, the review showed a no-look pass. Did he have to do a no-look pass? You know, probably not. It was fancy. That's Patrick Mahomes. But I think the ball bounced. The ball was catchable. And if it's a catchable ball, that's on the receiver. I don't know. I don't think he had to go no-look there. How open was Marcus Kemp? I mean, he was wide open. He was wide open. I could have thrown a touchdown pass on that. What, what are you doing? No look passing there. I, I think I don't know what uh, what did Mahomes say. Sam McDowell did was did Mahomes address that one specifically after the game? No, we had uh, too many turnovers to to go over them one by one. I think he did. He um, did mention it briefly, though. He just said uh, a tad behind. I think was how he referred to it. And he, he described you know, it is, that it would have been would have gone for a touchdown, right? I mean, it, yeah, if, a tad if behind would have gone for a touchdown. I do think, you know, I don't know if this is fair or not, but, you know, his tad behind is coming 100 miles per hour. And, you know, as much as we all come from the school of if if you touched it as a receiver, you're supposed to catch it. um, it, It's, I think, less easy than than maybe uh, we we want to assume it is. Um, I think he should have probably caught it. And, of course, the second – thing you don't want to do is let it get tipped up in the air from there. And that was, you know, we're not really talking about that play probably if it's just an incompletion. Yeah. I I do think it's, it's, it's all three of those things combined. Right. I think that it was a little bit behind. um, And, and I think the no look combined with the velocity, there was less reaction time than if, if he threw at the same speed, but was looking and Marcus Kemp's like, Oh, okay. The ball's coming. I'm you know what I mean? But I think, just that combination may have caught him off guard just a just a teeny bit and sometimes that's the difference i'll remind you that was marcus kemp's first target this season on the eighth or ninth offensive snap that he has taken in three games so it wasn't as if uh you know that that ball was heading toward even you know demarcus robinson or or someone else i saw a comment on twitter during the game I, i'm curious to know what you guys think about this that, that this was the Maybe we've started to see it throughout the season, but the, the, today may have been the, the first time that the Chiefs really missed having a definitive second wide receiver. And, uh, you know, it, it looks like the, you know, the, the Chargers, like the Ravens did last week, did everything they could to take Tyreek Hill out of the game. Kelsey was Kelsey until, um, uh, you know, until Darwin James, Darwin James got hurt. He was, Kelsey was being shut down again. So, uh, it was, you know, they, they were looking, you know, Kemp is in the game getting a target, and uh, uh, Demarcus Robinson did his 15-yard uh, reception, turning it into an, a 10-yard reception. We saw that one. 
And uh, of course, McCole Hardman had the jet, the, the the short pop pass touchdown as well. So, could you make a case that this is a game where you know they really, really missed a you know a Sammy Watkins like threat in in uh, you know, on on the among the wide receiver group? I, look, I, <laughs> at the risk of just saying the same thing over, like uh, you know where I stand about <laughs> if you have Travis Kelsey and Tyree Kill, I'm not going to feel sorry for who you have behind that. You know what I mean, I mean, they could use, and then the Chiefs think they could they use, use it too, right? Chiefs because uh, they also would have offered that contract to JJ Smith Schuster, so they think they they have a need there. But still, I mean, they've got they've got enough dudes, you know, they've got enough guys that they should be able to get this done. All right, uh, so I said we go over the, the the turn each of the turnovers. There was the Tyree Kill fumble, and as Patrick Mahomes reminded us after the game, he never fumbles, and yet there it was, and then. Of all guys to pick out uh, who would not fumble today uh, after the way last week ended, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, but there it was. Uh, looked like uh, you know Charger defender got a shoulder pad or helmet on the ball, and after you know get after he got spun around and out it popped, and yet another um, a, another turnover. So, uh, look, Edwards-Alaire ended up. Chiefs ran the ball effectively today. They they saw the. Uh, you know, the, the Chargers played uh, two two deep safeties most of the game. They left a lot of, you know, uh, basically challenged the Chiefs to run the ball, and they did maybe as effectively as they have all season. Right, Edward Jalera ended up with 100 yards rushing, first time since Buffalo game a year ago that uh, that the Chiefs had a 100 yard rusher in in the game, and and Mahomes still ended up with three touchdown passes and almost 300 yards passing. So they got. They picked up 33 first downs. The, the Chiefs, that was the four, tied for the fourth, fourth most in franchise history today. They moved the ball. I, I can't think of maybe just two possessions that didn't go into Chargers territory, but including that last one. So, um, so Lewis writes, <laughs> wants to know where Jarek McKinnon is. Who was it? Was it you, Sam McDowell, that turned to me and wondered if we were, you know, after that second, uh, after the Clyde Edwards Alaire fumble, that, that might have been the last we saw him. But Lo and behold, it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, um, Clyde had a really good day um, other than the fumble. And it's, it's, it's weird to say that because the fumble was such a huge play. But um, he had a big day. He had his best day of the season for sure. Um, I think I can hear Kirby maybe. <laughs> um, but uh, I did wonder because he's fumbled in back-to-back -back games and we've seen Andy Reid um, punish guys with that before. I mean, if, if you can't take care of the ball, it's hard to see the field. But what else was interesting about that that, that led to my thinking was Jarek McKinnon and Daryl Williams, we both saw – we saw them both on the opening drive of the game, which is new. Um, you know, Jarek McKinnon was on there for three straight snaps, and then we didn't really see much from him for the rest of the game. So I actually did think we'd see a little bit more of a rotation of the backfield today than what we ended up seeing. Um, but maybe that was the plan, but, but Clyde was hot, so they were riding the hot hand in the second half. I think the offensive line did a good job on, uh, uh, you know, for, for the most part today when it came to uh, create uh, opening holes in, in the running game. Um, a, a lot of comments on where is Juan Thornhill, and I, I we don't have the snap counts, Herbie. We won't get him until tomorrow morning, but um, uh, I don't remember seeing it. I certainly don't remember him making a play. I, I don't remember. I didn't see the defensive stats to see if he was credited with a tackle or anything. But this was absolutely not a Juan Thornhill day, and it's shaping up to be, at least in the first quarter of the season, a non-Juan Thornhill season. Um, but, 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 you know, look, the, the tackling seemed better today. Uh, fewer missed tackles. But I, I, can't, I, I can't vouch for the, 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 the secondary or the way the uh, – I thought the overall pass defense was poor. <laughs> um. But we're having some having some audio issues. Technical difficulty. Uh, you were on mute. Well, you the technical you difficulty know? is that he's oh, muted. I That's the audio issue. He he has mute on. I actually muted on purpose because uh, our, our friend Sydney from the Chiefs came in the room, and I was uh, trying not to be distracted. Did you ask me something? <laughs> <laughs> I was actually asking Herbie about the pass defense. Oh, I'll um, mute again. But so so we're, we're enough enough lips read during that uh, during that last comment, Herbie. Did you hear? I was asking about pass defense because we didn't yeah, see we, a lot of one Thornhill today. Yeah, not only that, they were also. Struggling.
start the game without a uh, Traverius Ward, who was inactive with quad injury. So they're down to Rashad Fenton, who left the game with a concussion. And, and now all of a sudden, the cornerback group looked pretty bad. Yeah, I think when it comes to Juan Thornhill, and Spags touched on this during his Thursday press conference with us. And the reason why Thornhill didn't see a lot of snaps against the Ravens was they stayed in a lot of the base defense. So that means they were in their 4 3. But Thornhill sees the field when they switched to a nickel or in their dime package, but they had three safeties on the field. And I don't think saw a lot of that look today. You know, the snap counts will tell us that uh, when it's released early Tuesday morning, Monday morning. And, and so we'll get a good idea of how many snaps he played on. But I'd be curious to know if it's more than the 11 he played against the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Sim, sim, simming, you all can hear me. Um, not exactly a panic time for the Chiefs, is it? I mean, I think based on the comments, a lot of people are angry. I get that. So, you know, if we had the, um, the the angry face emoji like we used to for the Chiefs, they'd be flying on the screen right now. Therese used to get a big kick out of the angry face emojis. Um, it, there, there's uh, the fact that the Chiefs have lost two games, and we can clearly identify why they lost, and and they lost in ways that um, that are unusual for them. And th- th- I, look, they still have some some patchwork to do on defense for sure. The, the rushing defense much better today, but it's a different type of team than the Browns and the Ravens. So, um, uh, Sam Mellinger, what what? Are these are the fixes fixable here? I think so. <clears throat> I really do. Um, by the way, this just caught my eye when I was looking through the numbers. Um, do you know the Chiefs average more yards per rush than per pass today? Um, I would love to know the last time that that that, that happened. But um, I, I do. I don't know if it's naive, but I, I do think that the the answers are in the room, as as they would say. I mean, they've got talented players, um, but I think that. I keep going back to it. It's, they look like a group that got used to winning games with bouts of sloppiness and and that just, you know, screw it. 15 will make up for it, right? Um, they'll find Tyreek on a fourth down or whatever. And, um, and that can still happen. You know, I mean, they could have beat the Chargers today despite everything that happened. They could have beat the Ravens despite all those mistakes. Um, but they're seeing, you know, the other side of it. And, and I think it's up to them to get diligent and do the stuff that Mahomes was trying to get them to do um, with the 20-0 thing. And, uh, I mean, they can do it, but I think that the burden of proof is now on them, which is a weird thing to say after all they've accomplished. Um, but they just they need to back up what they've been saying because uh, that, that hasn't happened for a while now. But they haven't turned it over like this. That's the thing that's kind of alarming, right? They. If, if you look at the the Chiefs turnover ratio, right? They've always they've not only been in the top ten, but the top five in the NFL over the in the Andy Reid era when it comes to turnover ratio, right? Um, many more takeaways than giveaways, and of course that was that's that's what got them over the hump against Cleveland, right? In the in the opener, the uh, the fumble by Chubb and the in the interception by Mike Hughes uh, sealed that game. Turnovers lost against Baltimore, and they absolutely lost today's game and. Uh, the, the Chiefs have been so good at uh, creating turnovers over the years and being careful. What did Mahomes have last year? Six six interceptions, I think it was. Twelve in his first year as a starter in 2018, and he six or seven last year. He just never turned the ball over. And you, you fumble once in a while, but he, he wouldn't throw interceptions. And to see – is it six? Yeah. So if to, And to see three in the last two games and – you know, an ugly one at the end of today. That that pass to Kelsey uh, it looked like Vahe didn't a miscommunication. You and I have talked about how they, how they, you know, they always seem to be on the same page. And in that moment, they were absolutely not on the same page. Yeah, it was. And I wish we could have talked to Travis too. But um, you know, in hearing Patrick, uh, it 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 was a miscommunication, and it wasn't just a guess. I mean, Patrick, um, I think the term he used was that that Travis. He normally would expect Travis to move farther down the sideline when once Patrick resets because he already had momentum in that direction. And if I understood Patrick right, and I think I did, literally as Patrick was resetting, it was the moment Travis maneuvered the other way. And it just it, – it's a rare thing, right? We, we've seen how, how crazy it can be between them, how they can read their minds. But in this case, uh, it was just a tick off and – 
that was everything. Karen says the pass rush looked better today, but still wasn't good. Better performance by the defense early. That was a waste on the turnovers. Totally agree. I, I think you're right. I, um, the Chargers punted away their first two possessions, and then the Chiefs gave away their first three. And this this game could have started so differently, so di- differently for the Chiefs. How about you know, the Chiefs are they overcome a two score deficit in the fourth quarter to beat the uh, to beat the Browns. They lose a two score lead in in Baltimore and lose to the Ravens. And they darn near overcame a, you know a fourteen zero uh, deficit here to to beat a Chargers team that. Um, that uh, you know that that I, I thought in the preseason was the biggest challenger to uh, to the Chiefs. It may, it may end up being the Raiders or the I don't think so. I still think in the end it's going to um, it, it's going to be the Chargers. So let's let's end on this thought and I'll get from each of you, and uh, maybe we can see if everybody's audio is working the way it should. We'll start with you, Herbie. Uh, anything through three games to lead you to believe the Chiefs are not the best team in the AFC West? No, no. It's, I tend to agree with Patrick Moore. Holmes said it. This, it's entirely early. You know, when, when the schedule came out, and this is something I've mentioned a couple times already, we knew the front part of the schedule was going to be tough. You weather the early part of the storm, and, and you know what? The second half of the season really favors them, and I just saw that, that message across the board there. They got to figure out a way also to get Jody Fortson more involved because I think uh, they would have won this game down in the end. Yeah, Colin was speaking directly to you, Herbie. Uh, glad to see Fortune into the mix. You and Herbie both. When Fortune had the touchdown, Herbie got up out of his seat, walked around, strutted. I think is a more accurate term. Strutted around the the, the press box. The press box. <laughs> Herbie is uh, is Fortune's biggest champion. All right, Sam McDowell. How about how about uh, you? With uh, one and two, last place, right? Um, Chiefs haven't been here in a while. Yeah, you know, I mean, I still think they're going to win the AFC West. You know, it's kind of funny. There were some players that I think were unhappy about the 17-game season when Herbie asked them about it in training camp, and now this team's probably going to be pretty pleased that they're playing 17 games instead of 16. Um, I, I think they're going to get it figured out, but, you know, I think that the worry is we've the, the very things that are biting them are the things that we heard a lot in the offseason were the things that they were going to be watching out for. Um, so that, that, I think, is concerning, but – it's always easier when you actually have film of what's going wrong rather than words about what's going wrong. And now they've got two losses on tape. Um, so I, I think that that could wake them up a little bit more. Um, but, but, but still, like I, like I said, you know, they've got some problems on the defense, especially with the pass rush that I think could be um, long lasting over the course of the season, that they're going to be playing through some, some, some holes that maybe we didn't see them have in 2019 in particular, and, and probably not even as much in 2020. So, uh, Melly, should we get ready for road playoff games this year? Maybe. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Um, or maybe if the Ravens get the number one seed, they'll lose in the first round again to somebody else. <laughs> Jeez, will host a game. Um, I just the, – the answers are in that room, but the answers need to be found. You know, and, and I think that the concerning part for me is that they spent this whole offseason talking about – more consistent focus and and what we've seen through three games is even less consistent focus than we saw last year. And, um, you know, strategically, Sam's right. I mean, the, the defense, um, they've got some major, some major stuff. Like it may, it may be a little bit more, the games may have to be won a little bit more like they were in 2018 than Chiefs fans are totally comfortable with. Um, but, you know, there are no perfect teams. And, and I do think it's at least worth, and look, the Chiefs have to, fix it and they've got to live up to their words and all that stuff but i do think it's worth noting that they literally just fumbled away what i think pretty comfortable pretty confidently would have been the game-winning field goal in baltimore and they were negative (laughs) four negative four on turnovers and they still had a chance here in the last minute so um, this team is really hard to beat um you know you've got to do a lot of things right so I i think that's worth remembering but gosh they've got a lot to fix for sure Okay, putting Sam down for panic. What do you think? What do you say, Vahe? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'd, I'd echo just a little slice of what each of the Sams was saying um, in this sense. You know, these are fixable things, sure. 
it's a little weird that the week after they lost a game because of turnovers, they doubled down on the turnovers. And, you know, again, that has not been characteristic of these teams. Uh, you would think that that is the kind of thing that, that a uh, little emphasis uh, can, can change. On the other hand, kind of weird that it went this way this week. So I, I, I do think, though, that it's all still right here for them, right? I mean, you still have to do it. Uh, I still think they've got the parts. And really, remember, that this just has to be uh, a defense that doesn't offset Patrick Mahomes too much. And I think Patrick Mahomes is still in the prime of his career. Okay, okay. And and like 2018, Mahomes is on a uh, – with three touchdown passes in each of the first three games, so that would put him on a, um, what, 51 touchdown pass rate. So that's kind of like uh, – um, that's kind of like 2018. And uh, uh, we'll see. It looks like, as, as many people have told us here in their comments, that the offense has to have the defenses back at least for a while. I, and, and look, in 2019, that was the case the first two months of the season – when the defense finally came around, got to see better pass defense, got to see a better pass rush, got to get Chris Jones more comfortable at defensive end. Um, uh, Mike Dana, did I miss a sack? I know Mike Dana had one. Was did I, that, that may have been it for the Chiefs today? Uh, I continue to be impressed with Justin Herbert. We able, we do, haven't talked enough about him. Uh, he came into Arrowhead last year and beat the Chiefs. He's two and zero in this building and in this stadium, and the Chargers have won three of the last four years in Kansas City. So um, that's a little, little tidbit when we when we talk about the Chargers. Um, so, okay, let's call it a day, you guys. I know they're going to kick us out of this uh, press box here pretty soon anyway. Thanks so much, everybody, for, for tuning in and joining us. We'll have Andy Reid health updates uh, as we get them, so just follow along on KansasCity.com, and be sure – to read Herbie Teope, Sam McDowell, Sam Melliger, and Vahe Gregorian. Beth Welsh, thanks so much for producing this show. And we will talk to you again on Friday. Keep that in mind, our little weekly session with, the, with, with these terrific reporters is on Friday at 9.30 a.m. Until then, take care. <laughs>